name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Dear brothers and sisters, it has become trendy today to uh, talk a, a lot about foods and diets, what's the best recipe, what's the most nutritious food, and uh, so on. And as a means of sustenance, food is very important. And it is a secret of a thriving society, no question about that. And as long as there is food on the table, no one complains. The Romans used to demand from their leaders only two things. Panem et circenses. Bread and games. Sounds a little bit familiar. And their politicians obliged, obviously, for political purposes. But for us Christians, food means more than just nutrition for the body. It also has a spiritual meaning. So let us talk today about the spiritual meaning of food. We may wonder why did God created food, the material food as a means of our sustenance. Why do we need to eat to survive? First, Food is meant to show our dependence on God. If we look at the account of the creation in Genesis 1.29, the Lord tells Adam and Eve, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. By the way, it seems like you were vegetarian at that time. God specifically intended that we will use the fruit of His creation to sustain our life. The need for food as a product of God's benevolence has been planted into our existence from the very beginning of our creation. The reason is very easy to understand. God wanted us to always remember that He provides for us, that we are dependent on Him, and we cannot survive without the food that He gives us. God is the source of all creation. We should always remember that nothing comes from us, but everything comes from the Lord. After leaving Egypt, while wandering in the Sinai Desert, God provided the Israelites with a type of food called manna. In Deuteronomy 8.3, it says, He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna which neither you nor your ancestor had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. In other words, as long as we put our trust in God, He will take care of our need for both material and spiritual food. So the purpose of food was to keep us aware of God's care and His love for us, to keep us humble, about it. No one can boast they can live without God's help and to keep us away from idols, from false gods. Secondly, food is also meant to nurture and to demonstrate our relationship with the Lord. Adam and Eve were allowed to eat from every tree of the Garden of Eden except one, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God gave them a simple command. Do not touch it, lest you will die. You see how food was used by the Lord to help them exercise their free will, their freedom to choose between good and evil. Unfortunately, they chose to disobey the Lord, and we all know the consequences. But this doesn't mean that we have to do the same. We use food to perfect our will and follow the Lord. This is why we fast during Lent. And now we are in the middle of the Lent of the Panagias. We willfully commit our needs to God. We trust in God's help more than we trust in the food. Fasting is a very important tool in fighting temptation. If you remember, the devil tempted Adam and Eve with food. He also tempted our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with food. 
So see how our dependence on food is essential in practicing our relationship and obedience to the Lord. Thirdly, food is the reason for thanksgiving. God sustains our life with food. We should always be thankful for that. Before every meal, even Christ our Lord gives thanks to God the Father. We should do the same. But material food doesn't take us far. The food that takes us into eternity comes from the Lord, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why our focus in life should not be material foods, even if we need them here on earth. In John chapter 6, very beautiful chapter, I recommend that you read this. Verse 27, Jesus says, He talks about Himself. But He tells us something very important. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. Christ has come into this world to provide us with the food that leads to eternity. His own body and blood, the Eucharist, the Holy Communion. Moses couldn't offer that, but Jesus did. When we receive Holy Communion, we eat the bread of life. And in the same chapter, verse 35, Christ says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. This is, my friends, the food that we need the most. We need Christ in order to live eternally in the presence of God. Now, when we say the Lord's Prayer, everybody knows it. And we get to a point where we say, and give us this day our daily bread. Now, why do you think that's there? Do you think Christ taught us to, take, to ask for material things here on earth over heavenly gifts in heaven? The translation of daily is misleading in English. For those of you who know Greek, the Greek word for daily is epiousion. There's two words put together and should translate as something above essence or beyond our present existence or even better the bread of tomorrow when we ask for the daily bread we actually ask for the bread of tomorrow the bread of eternal life Jesus Christ in Holy Communion in today's gospel reading the multitudes were looking like so many of us today to be fed the material food of this world. But Christ gave them a miracle bread. And we see that they were limited. He asked his apostles, you feed them. But they couldn't. So the bread that he gave them came from nowhere, but from God himself. And they received Christ in this way. He gave them life. And who can feed 5,000 or a million, or the entire world, but God alone. Yes, today we talk about nutrition, we have food channels, we are so obsessed with making sure that we eat the healthiest foods, that we have the most nutritious uh, elements, yet the Lord is telling us, don't focus on that. Focus on the food that leads us to eternity. So, my dear friends, let us first ask for the true food, the bread of life, Christ Jesus Himself. The food of this world will make us hungry again, as He just said. But whoever comes to Christ will never hunger or thirst again. In Christ, we have eternal life. And there is no more need for food. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.